Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today, we're going to be talking about normal brain anatomy. But first, a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of your screen. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only and is not intended to be used as medical advice. All right, let's get started. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, this image of the brain that I obtained from the um, Harvard Brain Tissue Resource Center. It's a fantastic resource. Uh, be sure to check them out. Okay, so when we're talking about the brain, it's first uh, always important to be oriented of where you are and what you're looking at. So um, this is the front of the brain where the eyes would be right here. This is the back of the brain. This is the very base of the brain. And this is the top of the head here. So the brain can be divided into different parts. There is the superior aspect of the brain, which is the cerebrum, which is the um, largest part in humans. Um, there's the inferior aspect of the uh, brain, which is made up of the uh, cerebellum and the brainstem, of which we can see just a little bit here. And the cerebrum, which is this large region here, is divided into five general lobes, or five regions, okay? So there's a frontal lobe here, there's a parietal lobe here, there's the occipital lobe here, and the temporal lobe here. Now a lot of people, when they look at the brain, they just see a whole bunch of bumps and grooves and it's, it's hard to say what's what. So today I, I want to go over what these different bumps and grooves are. Um, and so a, a big part of um, being able to tell which is which and what is what is we need to identify certain landmarks, okay? So the main landmark that we're going to look for is this fissure right here, which is called the sylvian fissure, also known as the lateral sulcus. And if we were to pull down the temporal lobe here and pull up the frontal lobe here, we would be able to see in between the insula lobe, which is the fifth and final lobe. Um, we, we don't see it in this image, but if we were to pull these uh, two lobes apart, we'd see that uh, insula lobe uh, buried deep within. Okay, so getting oriented, there's a, there's a, a fissure here. This is the sylvian fissure, also known as the lateral sulcus. And it is um, the major division between the temporal lobe here and the frontal lobe here. So knowing where the, uh, the lateral sulcus is, is our first step in being oriented as to which gyri are which. The, net, the next major landmark is going to be the central sulcus, which is right here. This is the central sulcus. It divides the frontal lobe anteriorly from the parietal lobe posteriorly. Notice how the gyrus behind or posterior to the central sulcus, um, this gyrus is called the post-central gyrus, kind of loops forward at, to form the gyrus in front of the central sulcus, and this is known as the pre-central gyrus. Notice how the central sulcus does not actually connect with the sylvian fissure. Um, this gyrus just kind of loops forward. And so let's talk about these two gyri here. Um, the pre, sorry, the pre-central gyrus here and the post-central gyrus here. Uh, these are two pretty important gyri. The post-central gyrus here, this is the primary somatosensory cortex, which is responsible for um, uh, things like touch. Uh, and the pre-central gyrus here, which is the primary motor cortex, which is going to be responsible for um, movements of your 
arms, legs, body, and face. So some folks might say that, um, you know, they just look like any other gyrus you might see on the brain. Um, so there's another way to tell which is which, um, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Let's look at some of the other gyri. Um, so if we take a look here, this is the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe can be divided into three gyri um, on its superior lateral aspect. The first one is the superior frontal gyrus. Then we have the middle frontal gyrus. And then we have the inferior frontal gyrus. So notice how the inferior frontal gyrus here, it forms these kind of squiggle lines, and then it backs right up against the precentral gyrus here. So the inferior frontal gyrus is going to back right up to the precentral gyrus here which is just anterior to the central sulcus. And then the gyrus just posterior to the central sulcus is this one. This is the post-central gyrus. Okay, so, but what do all these things do? Well, the post-central gyrus, as we had mentioned, is responsible for somatosensory. Okay, so touch, vibration sensations, uh, they all go here. The precentral gyrus is responsible for primary motor. The frontal lobe, and the precentral gyrus is all part of the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for things like higher thinking, things that are very much a human type of thinking. So planning for retirement, um, planning for the future, social interactions, social etiquette, um, personality, that sort of thing, is all um, handled by the frontal lobe. The post-central gyrus is part of the parietal lobe, which is right here. The parietal lobe is very much uh, an, an association lobe, it kind of puts things together. It's located between the frontal lobe and the occipital lobe in the back. The very back of the brain, or the most um, posterior aspect of the brain uh, is occupied by the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is responsible for handling vision and visual sen uh, sensations. Okay, um, and then next is the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe is responsible for hearing. A little bit more about the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe can be divided into three gyri very similar to the frontal lobe that we just talked about. So the temporal lobe can be divided into the superior temporal gyrus, the middle temporal gyrus, and then the inferior temporal. So the temporal lobe is responsible for uh, handling auditory sensations, okay? So uh, we talked about the uh, cerebrum, which is the um, a largest portion of the brain in humans. Um, and at the base of the brain, we have the cerebellum here. The cerebellum has a, a number of bumps and folds, and these are called folia. The cerebellum is responsible for coordinating motor movement. So things like um, being able to touch your finger to your nose, and then to another object in the distance, um, being able to have a steady gait, um, all of these things that coordinate movement are um, facilitated by these cerebellum. Okay, so that is our overview of the normal gross anatomy of the lateral aspect of the brain. Join us next time for Adventures in Neuropathology.